In the previous lecture, you have learnt about the various Java EE layers. In this one, you will see which Java technologies map into these layers. Starting with the presentation logic layer, which is responsible for displaying our application to the end user. Usually, it starts with the servlets JSPs, which internally produce HTML and JavaScript, but nowadays, it's more towards this HTML and JavaScript. We have tons of JavaScript rich libraries like jQuery, AngularJS, Bootstrap, which can be used to develop very beautiful UIs in a very easy way. The next layer is the deployment layer. This layer typically comprises of EJBs, which at one point were very famous, then the JMS, Java Messaging Services, which can be used to expose out the services provided by the next layers like the business logic layer to the other components within our application as well as to our UI or an entirely a different application running on a different platform altogether using technologies like web services. The business logic layer could be a simple Java class or it could be a session EJB. Finally, the data access layer which does all the CRUD database work comprises of JDBC, that is where we all start when we start learning Java, Java Database Connectivity, that is what it stands for. Or we can use wrappers like Spring JDBC from Spring, which makes our job to write JDBC code very easy. It's an abstraction or one more layer over JDBC. Then we have JPA, the Object Relational Mapping API from Oracle, which stands for Java Persistence API, which maps the database tables to our Java objects. The architectural component or common services layer, these architectural components can be used across these layers and typically we either code them in-house using these technologies here or we can use third-party libraries which are available in open source or commercial world. All these layers are typically tied up using the Spring Dependency Injection Framework. Spring also provides different abstractions or an easy way to implement UIs, implement the deployment layer and so on and so forth. But the general use of Spring is to tie or inject the dependencies across these layers in a very easy fashion. So to summarize, we have different technologies and frameworks across the Java E layers starting with servlets all the way to JPA and JDBC. We can master all of these or some of these depending on our project and business requirements.